to another live session, live discussion. Look, tonight we pick up on a video that I made during the week that is to do with thinking that undercuts our creative journey, thinking where, where the thoughts are common and they're often frequent and they've often been a part of our life for so long, they're just part of the background noise. Just for a minute, darling, can you stop the dishwasher? Just open it. Sorry about that. Or we'll have all sorts of gurgly pipe noises throughout this session. Um, but, yeah, often, often these thoughts are, are quite insidious the way they sneak up and we don't even quite realise they're there. Or we've had them for so, for so long, they really have just become, in our thinking, part of our life's baggage. And perhaps it's never really occurred to us that we could get rid of them. So, hola, Louise. Como esta? <laughs> um, okay. So, what's the what's the first the first thinking? Hi there, Ali. What's the first thinking that... Um, just look at quickly and there, there were 20 in the video I'm going to go through them but there are a few more I'm going to add in and I would love to hear any thoughts you've got any any thoughts that that keep playing in your mind at different times of your creative journey that you realize actually are holding back your creative development <laughs> well Ali you can still go out you don't need to stay in um that's okay and you're about to make breakfast, Louise, while I'll be going to bed in Australia after I finish this. So uh, the first thing we need to stop doing, and these are in no order, is to we need to stop thinking um, of things that people have said to us in the past that have discouraged us or put a block or a break on our creativity. It may have been a parent may have been someone at school who laughed at something that we did in art or in primary school and encouraged people around them to join in and we were so mortified that it made us terrified of other people seeing our work or it may just have made us think I'm not very good and yet for some reason we still want to draw we still want to be creative and I'm trying to use the word creative and not draw it in this because really this applies to any creative endeavor that we're doing whether it's whether it's yeah I don't need to give give examples I don't think but as I said if you're aware of these sorts of thought processes thoughts that come to mind ways of thinking that are undercutting your creative journey then please feel free to share them with us on the chat. Instead of remembering things that people have said, far more helpful is to give ourselves new thoughts to think about. Now, look, it may be that, in fact, as well as people who have spoken negative, negatively about our create, creative endeavours that we've remembered, there could well be people who have spoken affirming words to us, but somehow they those words haven't had as big an impact on us as the negative words. And if that's the case, then we need to recover those positive words and we need to bring those to the front of our mind and to realise that they have just as much, if not more, credence than the negative ones that we've heard. Um, and if... If it turns out that I can't think of anyone saying anything nice about my work, well, I can produce the voice. I have a voice as well, and I can speak that voice to myself, and I can say affirming positive things, certainly when they're true. And when I can see improvement or when I can see perseverance, when I can see any positive thing about my creative journey, I can give myself reassurance about that. I can give myself affirmation about that secondary school killed art for MD. I think that is a common story. Um, I think that is a very common story. But um, hey, I'm glad my videos have helped. Okay, I've got, we, we need to stop 
becoming resentful with things that interrupt our creativity. So when we're on a roll or when we've got a new idea and we we want to do it, we need to control that passion. We need to control those desires and we need to fit them in with whatever else is happening in our day. Feeling resentful about not being able to be creative is not going to bring a positivity to our creativity. It's not going to help us find the rhythm, find the balance, which will be, I think, the most productive state place to be in when we when we want to be creative. We need to, I think, embrace all of what's going on in our life so that that takes the pressure of the moment, of the time that we've got to be creative, if that makes sense. Okay. Here's, here's, I think, a very unhelpful way of thinking, and that's to think that it's going to somehow be easier in the future to be creative in whatever area of creativity we have, that somehow I'll have more talent, that somehow I'll have more experience, that somehow I'll be better, that somehow I'll have more time, that somehow I'll be able to afford the things that will make a big difference. It's really easy to see the future through rose colour spectacles and somehow think that automatically, just because the years have slipped by, things will be easier or better than what I'm facing now. That my thinking will change. And as someone who's had quite a lot of years slip by now, let me tell you that the future is exactly the same as today, unless I make changes to change it. <laughs> Give it up too early. Yep, yep. The, the frustration of, of, um, of not stick going where we want to go, and, and where does that take our thoughts? Where does that take our thoughts? I guess it takes our thoughts to thinking it's not worth it. It's not worth pushing on because I can't see the results that I'm wanting. And maybe the results that I'm wanting are in the future, but I won't get to them if I don't keep working at it now. Um, okay, here's another easy, easy thought to have that I think is quite toxic, and that's that it's easier for other people for some reason. And often that for some reason is not particularly defined. Or sometimes we can just be thinking that it's harder for me for some reason, that, that, that my life is filled with more hardships than other people's lives. And that includes in my creative endeavours. You know, I might think if I had more money, then it would be easier. Or other, pe other people have had guidance or tuition or encouragement that I haven't had as well as materials and supplies and opportunity. And look, every single one of those things may be true, but it's still an incredibly unhelpful, pointless thought to have because their life is not my life. And I also, of course, don't know what hardships they've had because I'm not looking for those that I haven't had. But whatever, it's not going to help my journey. It's not going to help my discovering of my creativity if I let resentment or jealousy of what I imagine other people have had to grow because it will just make me impatient and, and dissatisfied with my own experience as I try for it. Hello there, uh, Megumi. Welcome. It will just make me discouraged and discouragement is not a great place to start exploring and trying to develop our creativity. Okay. Um, the next one is fear. How much does fear just generally interfere in our life? But with creativity, there's all sorts of places for fear to kind of get in. But I think just simply fear that other people will think we're wasting our time if they see what we're doing. Fear that that no one will affirm what we're doing. Fear that I'll discover things about myself that I don't want to discover. 
fear, fear is a huge thing, I think, for the creative journey. Fear of being exposed with having no talent. I mean, and so what this can mean is that we try and, and hide our creative journey because we don't want to feel exposed to people. We don't want to be found to be lacking what we're wanting and hoping is inside of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, how do we overcome fear? Look, often, often the only... <laughs> yes, thanks, Louise. Often the only way to overcome fear is to push through it because we have to find that the fear is not valid or not worth it. We need to take the risk, but I think we can do it in a measured in a measured way. We we can perhaps perhaps try and take risks with people that we have reason to think will be kind to us, or maybe we can share the risk. Maybe we can be in some sort of group show with some other friends. But in the end, the only way we we learn that the fear is a lie is to is to push into it and to do the thing that we're afraid of. Um, if it's, you know, a bungee jump, well, there's just one moment where you have to take the risk. But for, but for I think, the creative area, it's, it's, it can be an everyday moment-by-moment moment thing. Everyone else's art is better than mine. Yep, that's certainly one of my points. <laughs> I certainly remember that feeling. And look, on any given day, I can find drawings that I think are better than mine. Oh, it might take me about 30 seconds on Instagram to find drawings that I think, oh, man, I could never do that. And that's the problem with social media. We can so quickly find people who are better than us. So if we're looking for a reason to condemn ourselves and to say we're no good, we can find one super fast. What we need to do is stop, stop comparing ourselves to other people. I think that's another point further down the list. Um, yeah, here's, here's a thought that I think is very, very unhelpful. And maybe, again, I'm sounding like a grumpy old man um, with this one. But I think it is particularly prevalent um, with, with younger people on their, on their creative journey. And, and that's, that's the sort of impatience that... That, that swells in, in minds thinking, I just need to find the shortcut. I just need to find the hack. I just need to find the trick. I just need to find what it is I need to find that lets me do what other people are doing um, so that my work will look like their work. What is it they know that I need to know? And when I know that, when I do the course that reveals the secret to me, then, then my art is going to be like their art. And it's, it's, it's a toxic thought because, because it's just pointless. There is, there is no magic. It's not like that. There's encouragement, there's inspiration, and there are certainly skills we can learn. There are ways of thinking we can develop. But there's no magic tip or trick that's going to catapult us to the end of the journey from the beginning. And often I think we end up thinking that when we have an end goal that's not as simple as developing and improving my creative ability in whatever creative field I'm in. Goodbye, Ali. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think it's 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 incredibly unhelpful because what it does is it fixates us on a very very unhelpful process of keeping to search for the newest latest hack. And what it stops me from doing is is finding a learning process that takes me on the journey in a in a in a good order in a good progression of of learning whether it's thinking or skills practice subjects that it, it 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 carries me along in a multitude of interconnected ways that all strengthen as i journey along it that's what that's what i need to 
to develop my creativity, in this case, in my drawing. And I won't get that from a 10-minute video on tips. Now, look, tips can be helpful depending what they are, but it's not a shortcut. And look, I, I'm like many YouTubers, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of using those words on my thumbnails because people click on them. And I hope that what I put in those videos is actually extremely helpful and in some ways perhaps can be a bit of a fin on a more productive learning journey. So that's that one. Um, I need to I need to learn not to listen to the the negative voices in my head, particularly my voices. And I'm thinking particularly of if we've fallen into a perfectionistic mindset where everything we do, we start to tell ourselves it's no good, it's not good enough, it's a waste of time, it's not going to turn out, what's the point of finishing this? Or where we 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 talk ourselves into putting it because I'm going to mess it up and I can get myself so worked up that I'm actually not capable of completing the drawing or whatever the process is because I get too worked up fearing a mistake and ruining what's what has worked out. And so it just snowballs within me and overwhelms the whole experience. And what what should be fun, what what should be great, what should be a learning experience ends up becoming a very discouraging time. So those thoughts, it's really important to try and change the way we think and sometimes we can't change the way we think but we can can make decisions to change what we do and i've got a number of videos on perfectionism where i, I give some strategies of of ways we can reorganize the way we in my case draw for a certain period of time that that make it easier to develop some positive drawing experiences and then hopefully those experiences will start to to become more prominent in my thinking than negative perfectionism yep yep there's nothing worse than feeling that i'm not allowed to make a mistake and that somehow making a mistake negates all my dreams and hopes and aspirations that that i've got this creativity within me I need to stop thinking, I think, about lost opportunities if I want to progress into the future. I need to stop mourning the fact that I didn't take art in high school, that I didn't take that, that art college course, that I didn't take up that, that fellowship somewhere, that I didn't make more time in my 20s uh, to, to draw that I didn't um, join a local art society back in when I lived in the house where there was a local art society that I could have joined. There are all sorts of regrets we can have about our creative journey when we go back. And the problem with them, I think, with thinking with all these regrets is it can sometimes, they can sometimes become an excuse for us not doing anything now. It's like, if only I had done this then, then I'd be in a position now where I'd be able to do something. You know, I'd, I'd be well enough along that I could do these other things now and now it's too late and I, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to bother. Look, at another point, and it, it comes in quite neatly with this one, is, is the thought that it's too late, that I'm too old, that too much time has slipped by and that... I can't do it now that it's not worth it. And probably a lot of you know, know my journey at this point that I did art in high school and, and just a few little things for a couple of years after that. And then I did nothing for 30 years until I was 50 when I began to paint. And I didn't actually start to draw really till I was 60. And so, gosh, 60, uh, that sounds pretty late to start anything. <laughs> And yet, you know, um, in some, I did find that my 10 years of painting incredibly informed my drawing process. 
and it just you know, I was 65 when I started a YouTube channel. It's it's never too late if it's in me and I haven't done it and I want to. It's never too late to start. So don't let that thinking that I've left it too late get in the way. Um, late to do that now. It's too late to do this now. I'm thinking 18. I was still a child. Apologies to any 18 year olds. Um, but like I actually thought I was too old to do these things that. I look back now and I think it's crazy. My whole life was ahead of me, and somehow in I'd written it off. The failed pieces of tangible proof that I'm wasting time and money to keep trying. Yep, yep, yep. If there's no one, if there's no one accusing us, uh, we'll accuse ourselves. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's that's. How, how do we get out of that? How do we? How do we? Stop saying that. We have to give ourselves a new narrative. Um, uh, and, of course, uh, just the whole like, the whole concept of failed pieces. I mean, good. the way I try to think of my artworks where not everything is um, quite how I wanted it to be is that it's been a great learning experience and when I do it again, I'm going to have much clearer focus as to what I need to do in certain parts of it because I know that what I did in this work didn't turn out. And, again, I, I think one of, the, one of the most unhelpful things that we can have, unless we're very, very, very experienced as, as artists, is to think that when we sit down with a canvas or a sheet of paper that we're going to produce an artwork because are we? Well, what's an artwork anyway? But what we're going to do is we're going to do our best to produce something. And at the end of it, we'll get to look at it. We'll get to look at it and think, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go with this? Am I happy with this? Did it come out the way I wanted it to come out or not? And then we can make choices about the next, the next one we're going to do. But more about drawing. That's an incredibly positive, I think, mental framework to have because it takes the pressure off me if i'm if i think i'm learning then it doesn't have to be perfect i still see myself as a student in a in a in a pro in a course even if i'm the only one doing my course and i'm the teacher as well i think it's really helpful but if when i start to draw or paint i think i need to produce an artwork there's a huge pressure on me then to not make a mistake. And then I'm suddenly more focused on not making mistakes than on producing the artwork, than on giving expression in creative ways with what's in me. Unless it's a commission, then it's a little bit different than I really do for an amateur. Um, Mr. Zaku, I would recommend you use whatever pens you can easily afford and, and obtain very easily as well because there's nothing that will be less productive to your development as an artist than being afraid of using up your art supplies because you can't really afford them or they're hard to get. So that, I think, really is important. For... for The difference that different brands create for different artists, I don't think matters much at all for a very long way into someone's into someone's drawing development. That that really, when when you're producing art at a very high level, then then I think the materials you use can start to make a difference, and you've refined all these other skills. That now means that that the skill of, of, of how particularly you use particular products start to have perhaps a very slight impact on your work. But as I said, you know, I remember as a kid having all this, when I had paper to draw, and I didn't want to draw it because I didn't want to use it up. I felt, I felt more secure having it. <laughs> um, what's the point of that? No point whatsoever. So, I mean, look, I, I use Copic um, pens. 
I'm aware they're very expensive for most people in most parts of the world. When I went in, as I said, I was I was 60 before I I started to draw, so I did have money that I could I could uh, use for art supplies. I didn't particularly realize they were the most expensive. They were just the ones I bought, and I liked them, so I just kept going back to them, and. That was the reason I started with them. And because I've stayed with the same brand, I've really come to understand them. And I think I can therefore, I think I can therefore get better usage out of them because I understand the sorts of marks they make according to how I hold them or press and all of these things. So that's the that's the other thing, um, Dr. Zaku, I would say, uh, Mr. Zaku, I would say, in that what brand you do use. Um, stay with it for a while and um yeah what's louis saying watch the youtube comparing copic to ohuhu and ohuhu was much cheaper and quite comparable yeah you know i mean i'm not i'm not being made by by copic um or anything um yeah yeah but but certainly use the brands that you can afford to use up and not think about the expense because then you'll always feel free to experiment and the same with paper there's no point buying paper that's so expensive you're afraid of, of, of exp being experimental with your lines. Um, but if, if, if you only use copy paper, I really would suggest that you at least experiment with some cheap cartridge paper, something more like um, oh, what we used to call project books when we were at school, but something that's just not quite as smooth because a very slight texture on the paper does create um, quite a good opportunity for effect, and I think really, uh, uh, unless perhaps you're doing mango, which I mango, which I think works very well with very smooth paper, but um, I would at least recommend trying some cartridge paper. Um, oh well, that's um, um, there's another thought. Yeah. There's actually the next thoughts about art supplies, but that's that's thinking that somehow I need to wait till I can afford expensive art supplies. That there's no point there's no point trying until I can afford the very best products or until I can get this material or that material. Again, this can just be a very um, a very poor excuse for giving into fear and just not 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 starting sometimes we're really torn between wanting wanting to, to to create and being afraid to create and if we fall into that place we can start to make excuses about why i'm not starting and i need to get proper equipment certainly can be a mistake uh, certainly can be an excuse and and clearly one that's not going to help our drawing creative development uh, Lee, what are you saying there? Um, prefer ballpoint pens over fine liners. And why not? Because as I said, whatever whatever uh, materials we use consistently, we'll learn to bring the best out of that 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 material of that pen or or pencil for the sorts of artworks that we're wanting to make. So it's and and. The other thing is if we specialise in certain materials and become really good using those materials, we also develop skills with using materials that will actually transfer into other supplies that we might then go to use. We, we, pick up, we, we learn a sensitivity to our materials when they're the same ones over and over again. Then if I do change brands for some reason or just try a different brand out, I've developed that skill, that sensitivity. But if I just kept chopping and changing from one brand at random to another, just whatever was there, then I don't learn that skill and I can't apply it to other other brands. Not, in our thinking, I, I need to not be resentful of responsibilities that I have in life to myself and to other people that stop me being creative in the way I want to be. Life has its rhythms. Every decade of our lives, different seasons of our lives have different rhythms. And some of them 
are not conducive to my having time to be productive. And there's simply no point being being resentful about it. I need to I need to use each season in the best way. So if there are seasons where I I have little I maybe I'm I'm creative in an area that does cost a lot of money and I don't have money. Uh, or, or I have family responsibilities, I, I have children, I have people I need to care for, then I use that time creatively still. I, I learn, discover ways that, that I can think to help me um, position myself so that when I actually have the time to put the plow into the ground again, I'm ready. I've, 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 I've fast-tracked myself by preparing my thinking, by doing the things I can do, by being poised, ready to start again. Um, I think a very, a very unhelpful thought-thinking process to have is to be fantasising too much about future success. And, again, this, this possibly is more of a more of a common thing because social media now than perhaps it, it once was. But in some ways, we can showcase our work before others more easily than could ever happen before. I mean, you know, gosh, when, when I was a boy, um, it was, wasn't necessarily easy to have your work seen by anyone except your mother. Um, <laughs> whereas now we can post things and... We also see people who've been successful, what to us seems really easily and really quickly, and we can aspire to that as well. And we can end up, I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be successful, but but we, get, can, we can mix up aspiring to success with aspiring to excellence in our creativity. And they can get so tangled up that at a given point, it's not sure whether I'm really going after the creative success or just the success, the social media success, the opportunities we believe it might bring, the money we think it might bring, or whatever. I think it's really helpful to um, to keep contained how far we want to run ahead with thoughts of success and to really concentrate on developing our creativity, developing that particular art form that we're attracted to, that we're trying to, to develop and to excel in. There will be time for success when we've improved a lot, I suspect. Yeah, and um, I think this one's really important, and I touched on it before, and that's, and, and I think, Louise, you mentioned it, and that's comparing my work with the work of other artists. And again, with, with Instagram and with other other platforms, it's so easy to see people who are amazingly good all the time and to think, oh, man, why am I bothering? I didn't even know anyone could draw as well as that. And and what chance have I got? You know, and firstly, it's not a competition. Uh, only one person in the end will be the best at anything in the world by definition. And it would be very sad if only one person in the end pursued each area of, of opportunity and the rest of us gave up because we knew we were never going to be the best. That would be a shame too, I think. Um, but, but the problem is that, that when I see a work that someone else has done, I don't know how they did it. I don't know what their process was. I don't know what we're comparing when I compare my work with their work. I remember, I remember looking at, um, at at one artist's work, and then at some point I discovered that they used a projector to get the pencil outline on the paper. And suddenly I thought, oh, oh, yeah, because I'd never done that myself, and I hadn't thought of doing that, and therefore I thought oh, their, their, their work is just impossible, I, I could never do it. Well, I probably couldn't do it unless I did it that way and I didn't know what method they were using. And it was therefore um, not, just, not just pointless but a bit unfair on myself to be comparing my work 
with their work because they had nothing in common. You know, I, I don't know also that person, how long they've been learning for. I don't know what, what study they've done. I don't know how many drawings it took them to produce that one. I don't know how long they spent on it. I don't know whether that's the fifth or sixth or seventh attempt at that actual drawing that they did. So why would I be evaluating my self-worth as an artist by comparing my work with work that I know nothing of the cost and the input for it? It really is pointless. The only person I want to compete with is myself. What I would really like is that the drawing I do today is in some way further along the path for what I'm wanting than the drawing I did yesterday and so forth. Okay. Um, okay, here's, here's, I think, a very unhelpful um, thought process, and that's to think that um, I need to wait until I feel creative. I mean, of course, I can do that if I want, but I won't, I won't probably develop very far along my creative journey, and I may well get sidetracked off it completely if i if i want to develop skill and expertise in any area i need to be consistent at it i need to make choices that sometimes i won't necessarily feel like doing but i make the choice because i know in the long run it will give me the end result i want i make choice but at that point i look at the long picture and i remind myself of the end point I want to get to with my daily exercise and I get up and do it. It's exactly the same with our creativity. The mistake to think that I have to wait till the, the muses descend on me and inspire me and fill my mind with, with inspiration and the desire to, to get up and, and do amazing things. No, I need to say, well, I, I said to myself, I was, going to do two hours of drawing Saturday morning. And so Saturday morning is here, so I'm going to get up and do it. And that's where creativity gets to give birth to something. And if I do that consistently, it will become more and more astounding for me as I go on. Here's another one, finding a way to do something and then feeling like I cheated because it was too easy. <laughs> well, there are no rules. I mean, if, if if you find an easy way, maybe you should you know, have a YouTube channel if you do that too often um, <laughs> because people are always wanting easier ways to do it. Sometimes it's just that we lack the information that we needed for us to understand the easier way to do it. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with finding the, the easy way because the easy way is often the most productive way. Sometimes for some reason we start in the wrong thought processes. And so we start doing things in a more difficult way. And then at some point we discover the way that, that perhaps, perhaps we, we might have known from the start with a little input from, from other people. Maybe because it's raining outside. So yeah, actually I've, I've had got really bad, um, I don't even know the words to use. I was trying to upload a video video onto YouTube for about three hours this afternoon, just before we started here, and um, I couldn't. It just it just wouldn't load. And I'll try again when when this finishes before I go to bed. But um, it is very unsettled wet weather in Sydney at the moment. Sort of, yeah, yeah. And I've noticed that often we get bad reception. The the TV TV Netflix wasn't working so well. It kept the signal kept um, kept having problems. So um, that could be that could be impacting this. Um, finding a way to do something. And uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, well, here's here's an obvious one, and that's. A very unhelpful thought process is to judge my success by my likes, followers, and subscribers on my comments on, on all the social media things. Because that simply tells me what's popular. And what's popular isn't necessarily the same as what's good. 
sometimes things um, are in fads and therefore it's easier to get likes if we follow the fads, if we follow the trends and if we kind of copy what other people are doing. But they're not necessarily, they're probably not in fact good ways to develop our creativity because they're derivative, they're, 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 they're sourced really from someone else's creativity. I, I'm better off looking deep within myself and seeing what's there and trying to find my own ideas and developing the skill of giving birth to original creative thoughts and not feeling that I need to start with something that someone else has already kind of put there. Um, and that may mean that I'm a bit of a trailblazer. But learning to let my creativity give birth to more creativity, creativity is, I think, a very helpful thing. And I, I know with some of my Instagram posts, some of the drawings that I personally feel are my best drawings, the ones that I felt best about when I finished them didn't do nearly as well as others. And I have some subjects that I kind of know if I do another drawing like that, it will do really well because these sorts of drawings, these sorts of scenes, these sorts of compositions, these sorts of framings of the work, these sorts of contrast within the, the values will attract attention quickly. The algorithm will respond to that and push it out to more people and so forth. And so it's, it's easy to sort of try and choose sometimes to go down that path. And yet that often means I'm not doing the drawings I want to do. I shouldn't let my, unless I'm, I'm a, I'm a professional artist and I need to learn it. I need to earn an income from my art. I shouldn't let um, the applause of people determine which paths I go down. Yeah, and that's that's greatly. Um, create your own style. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think uh, Louise, this was another one that you said, but a very unhelpful thought is simply to think all the time that other people have more talent. Well. What is talent? I'm not even sure talent's a thing. I think we all have creativity within us and, and just by nature of being human and and it, it comes out in different ways and how it comes out often depends on what examples we had around us when we were young, what, what means we had to develop various crea creative possibilities. Um, or didn't have, but you know, any time we bring something into being that that wasn't really there before, we've been creative. You know, if I'm a if I'm a a parent bringing up children, um, and at the end of the day, there there's more in them than there was in the morning. Well, I've I've been creative in their lives. If if I reorganise the way. I don't know, a production line works in a, in, a, in a company to increase productivity. I've been creative. Uh, I've, I've brought something into being that wasn't there before I interacted with it in a certain way and so forth. But, you know, it's, it's always easy to think that other people somehow are just born with a head start and that excuses me perhaps from dealing with my issues and perhaps even having to work hard is what I don't want to do. And so, or to take the to other people having a head start and advantage, whether we call it talent, whether we call it encouraging parents, whether we call it they had more time, whatever. It's really quite pointless for my creative journey. So the sooner I can stop that thinking and instead look at their work and perhaps be inspired by it, the better. Um, I think probably connected with, with the last um, social media 
comment that that I made, and that's simply letting my feelings of contentment with where my creativity is at be in the hands of of the algorithms for whatever whatever platform we're posting our work on is a really bad move. I mean, it it is nice to be affirmed, and and the the social media world can be very affirming and it can be very helpful and encouraging but it's a mistake to be i think to let myself be driven externally or be pulled externally by social media responses uh, my drive needs to come from within it needs to i need to have my own reasons that don't depend on the applause or success of other people if i want to last the distance i don't think and the other thing is, I think I need to develop a resilience against making mistakes and having disappointments and failures in what I do. There's nothing less helpful than every time I make a mistake, I start to condemn myself. I start to somehow see this as proof that I'm wasting my time, that everyone else is better, that what was I thinking, and just start this role of negative comments playing between my ears. I need to develop a really healthy attitude to mistakes. I need to see mistakes as things that point me in a better direction for improvement, things that focus where I need to, to concentrate my, my attention so that I can overcome the weaknesses, things that, that highlight to me perhaps certain skill areas where I need to put more time and effort before I try to go any further in other ways because I haven't yet mastered things to the point that I want to master them. Mistakes are incredibly helpful and I have quite a few videos on making mistakes and dealing with mistakes but the one big thing I've learned is that mistakes look appalling when you've made them but most of the time, almost all the time in my experience, they're not nearly as noticeable at the end or they're actually not noticeable at all to anyone else until you point them out. And even when you point them out, sometimes it doesn't make much difference. They really can't be seen that much. And yet so much of our life for some of us in our artistic endeavours is spent being afraid of mistake, being afraid of making mistakes or haranguing ourselves for mistakes that we've made and yet in the finished product, they're not necessarily such an important thing. And again, it doesn't matter if, we, if we're seeing our drawings as part of a learning process. It's only a problem if we see our artworks as artworks and we think I'm producing something that has to be suitable to sell or hang in a gallery. Instead of thinking I'm learning to draw and it's a process and I'm getting better and better and better but any one thing i produce is going to have things that i can learn from and improve and that's why i'm learning okay well look that's that's my list there thanks everyone i think i'll um probably have an early night unless Anyone wants to ask me a question on anything related with drawing, doesn't have to be about this. So if you have a question that you want to put, then now's the time. Otherwise, we'll say good night and I'll see if I can upload that video now, whether there's enough bandwidth or whatever the technical words are. So are there any questions for anyone? Now is your chance. Okay. Well, look, thanks for joining and um, hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye now. Thanks, Mississippi.